welcome to the next edition of Neural Wrapped. Today we're going to introduce you to a merger, and it's not the kind of merger that you see on Wall Street. It's a merger of neurology, neuroscience, and art. Our guest today has been a neurologist, neuroscientist, and professional artist for over 30 years. His artwork is a metaphorical exploration of consciousness and our thought processes. And today, we're going to take a journey through the artistic mind of our guest, Dr. Audrius Pleopolis. Most of these pieces, I highly transformed the photograph. Mm -hmm. And some of them, I kept the photograph intact, like in this piece, just for illustration purposes. The reason I would transform them into unrecognizable states is one thing visually becomes more appealing and interesting. But it was to parallel the way our visual memories work. We have innumerable visual memories stored away in our heads, but we don't have filing cabinets of photographs. Okay, they're not there. Mm -hmm. They've been transformed into mm -hmm. different hmm. systems. Mm -hmm. So that's why I transform them huh. into different systems. But the photograph's there. Every bit sure. of it's there. Sure. But it's been transformed, just like our brain transforms it. But it's there. Here I kept it just to show illustrative purposes. This is the looking up at the, the blue sky, and we're looking at the roof of the mathematics building at the University of Chicago, <laughs> and here we have the gargoyles sticking out. Uh -huh. uh, two gargoyles in the corner, uh -huh. and that's where the demons comes from. Uh -huh. and, and the gargoyles are supposed to scare away evil spirits. We then have neuronal profiles. These are from human cerebral cortical tissue from death after death that a, uh, over 100 years ago, Cajal, a, a neuroscientist in, in Barcelona, uh, worked and prepared uh, material. He, he was the first person who was able to demonstrate the actual appearance of neurons mm. and how complex they are. Mm. Before him, people had no idea mm -hmm. what, this, what the nervous system looks like. So you're just seeing little bits of the complexity of our central nervous system, huh. the, the interactions of many, many different neurons, sure. the processes overlapping, wow. and how they're interconnected. But what I'm dealing with here is the question, of where does our thinking come from? And it arises, or consciousness comes from, and these are, it's an emergent property. Mm -hmm. It's a property that comes out of the hundred billion neurons we have in our head and the trillions of interconnections that take place. And, and it's from this massive amount of interaction that, that all of a sudden consciousness, self-awareness comes. I cannot have art as a separate world from my neuroscience interest. They have to be together in some fashion. Where does consciousness come from? Where does thinking come from? Where does this, our philosophy come from? Where do us as human beings come from? But instead of looking at, you know, laboratory animals or clinical studies, I was doing that in addition in art, in the art I was creating. Well, this is one of the pieces from a sequence of work that I call Symphonic Thoughts. Uh, one of the artists that I've been fascinated with and I did a lot of work, research work and published a lot of articles about is a Lithuanian artist during the century, of the last century. Um, Chirlionis was his last name. He was both a comp composer and a painter. And a lot of his artwork includes a lot of musical themes and elements. So, sort of to honor him and his, and his legacy, I wanted to do a series that sort of where the entire sequence deals with musical issues in a fashion. This particular piece, I started with a photograph that I took of a valley in the Rocky Mountains in Colorado and transformed it. You can hardly recognize any geographic things in here. The pixels moved around bit by bit by bit here and superimposed on it is a, my electroencephalogram. I only used five traces. The original electroencephalogram has 18 different traces. The reason it took five is because sheet music has five lines on it. So to keep it, keep it with music, the score. And, 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 the, and this electroencephalogram was done while I was thinking about the artwork of Vermeer, the, the 16th century Flemish artist uh, whose work is very peaceful, and I think very beautiful, and to me, the best, best ever. This particular piece is one of four in the chromodynamics series. And the question I was asking was, where are our memories kept? We have 100 billion neurons in our heads. We have trillions of synaptic interconnections. And the theory for memory storage has been sort of there for many, many decades, is that changes in synaptic connectivity take place and stores our memories. Now we have so many memories, we're accumulating new ones every single day. The old ones, some disappear, most don't. We're just accumulating more and more. My question is, is it sufficient to just changes in connectivity between synapses? 
between neurons at the synaptic level? Or do we have to look further? Do we have to look further down at other states? The question I'm asking is maybe we have to look at the quantum level, go into physics at the quantum level. And quantum uncertainty, maybe that's where our memories are coded. Synapses are, are intermediates, but maybe the storage is at a different subatomic level, submolecular level. Further down, you may want to look at to the smallest of the small, and that would be in strings and string theory. And could it be coded there in multi-dimensional states The string theory requires? And so to looking at these kinds of speculations, one thing, the quantum world and quantum uncertainty is reflected in the haziness and the fuzziness of this piece. The string theory, strings, if you look very carefully at the fine detail, you see everything is tiny little wiggles here throughout the entire piece. There's nothing but an amalgam of strings. In this particular piece, I wanted to have kind of neuronal patterns. Um, the pieces themselves are previous artwork, which include neuronal pattern profiles, my transformed uh, photographs, words emerging, uh, electroencephalograms, brain scans included in them, and, and little sort of these speech pieces about the palm, size of the palm of your hand. And they're like two figures reflecting each other in a mirror pattern, not identical, but there's a kind of a kind of a general pattern of, of, of reflection one to the other in some kind of interactive movement. I think dance might be a word somebody might use for this in dancing figures. And then these big elliptical loops which reverberate on one and reverberate on the other. And I wanted to include these kind of reverberations sort of in, in part reflect a, a kind of commenting about celestial issues of elliptical loops of planetary and solar orbits that are in ellipses and uh, the, the, the reverberatory memories that uh, just memories often reverberate in our mind. We hope you enjoy today's journey, artistic journey, through the mind of Dr. Pleopolis. We've certainly seen lots of colors, shapes, uh, conceptual ideas about the mind, thoughts, uh, consciousness, peacefulness, altruism. If you are interested in learning more about his artwork, and there's a lot more, and his past and future exhibits, go to pleopolis.com and you'll be able to get more information there. Dr. Pleopolis will be coming back for another episode. Now that we've seen his artistic side, we're now going to go on a clinical journey with Dr. Pleopolis talking about cerebral palsy. And on that note, that concludes our episode. That's a wrap for NeuroWrapped. See you next time.